Sure. Uh, the question is, what argument is made in the Anne Morant Lindbergh quote about the unknown? Is this a valid argument? Does Virgilio Martinez embody the spirit of what Anne Morant Lindbergh expresses in her quote? And I think that her argument is that going or like venturing into the un unknown can um, can be very enriching in the end, but people tend not to because it can be risky or, you know, hard to deal with. But um, going into the unknown can like, I guess it can like grow your mind since you're having those different experiences. And I don't know, I guess like open your mind to different things and seeing different views or whatever. But I think um, Virgilio Martinez does embody the spirit of going into the unknown because he goes out into the forest or whatever and um, he like finds different foods and he tries all of them, which I mean, any normal person, well I shouldn't say anything, <laughs> any normal yeah, yeah, person no, no, you're would right. go into the forest and just like eat everything that they see because that's pretty risky, <laughs> but um, he goes in there and sometimes it's disappointing, sometimes he doesn't find, find what he needs, but the fact that he's going and venturing out um, is very beneficial towards him. And that's how his restaurant became so famous. Um, I agree with Amber on him and you know him going into like the forest and everything to like find new ingredients. But I think his unknown is also his restaurant. Because, you know, he's finding all these unknown ingredients for his restaurant, which he doesn't know how it's going to go because, you know, he's trying to make his own, like, Peruvian dish. And, you know, everybody's so used to all, like, the traditional ones. So him, like, trying to make his own is the unknown, you know? Because you don't know if people are going to like it. You don't know how they're going to react to it. So, yeah. I want to talk about the argument of the Pope by Anne. Uh, we tend not to choose the unknown, which might be a shock or disappointment or simply a little difficult to cope with, yet it's the unknown with all its disappointment and surprises that it's most enriching. And I want to open up the idea of the unknown being change. And not as much a shock or disappointment of, as it is fear of change. A lot of people are so used to what they're dealing with all the time that they're not open to change because they're afraid that it will be either shocking or disappointing or not something that they want to. But for those who do embrace the change, they, they do go through those, but in the end, it's incredibly enriching for them because they have this whole new mindset and this view on life. And I feel like that sparks right back to what Savannah said. Everybody's used to the old Peruvian dishes. But then Virgilio comes in and was like, oh, yo, try these. And people end up like scared, like, oh, should I really try these? Literally looks like moths on a rock that he pulled out of a river. <laughs> and I'm like, they're like, well, I don't know if I should try this. What if it's really bad? I'm scared. But then they end up do liking it when they try it. They're dis they're not they're not disappointed as much as they could have been, but they still embraced that fear of the unknown or change, and ended up having this enriching moment of embracing the change. Which I feel like he really embodies the spirit of whatever that that, that idea of the fear of change that Anne Moreau was trying to uh, bring forward because he himself is not afraid. He's always been venturous. The, the, he's probably been disappointed or shocked, we don't know, because it was never shown to us on camera. But we know that he, despite the shock and or disappointment that he went through, he stuck to it. He continued through the unknown and made what he did into such this amazing restaurant in this world that he's opened up the rest of the world too, that they were completely unknown. They went to the mountains of Peru, got all these cool altitude foods and stuff that people have never seen. Just the true embodiment of change. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my table. Um, I think that Isaac made a really great point because really everything, like his livelihood is based off of risk because he even lost a bunch of customers and just the fear of knowing that people like traditional Peruvian foods and knowing that when, when you change that and kind of go against the current, people are gonna leave. Mm -hmm. And then we don't know if anyone's gonna come back. Mm -hmm. And it's just like it's just like that foundation already being 
like a like a risk and just not like completely stable. And the fact that he built on that is, in my opinion, truly amazing. So, yeah. All right, let me let me ask then. What can what what can not them you <clears throat> learn from an example like that? That somebody is willing to take that kind of risk to lose everything for high gain. What can you learn from that? Me personally? Or yeah, me? personally. Um, I know. Uh, I guess in my from my opinion, many examples from going like different seminars and especially watching this and reading um, some about the, the person who wrote the quote, quote Anne Rowe Lindbergh, and um, I think personally to embrace the change, kind of how. Um, so I guess like for example at the restaurant when people started coming and it was considered a change well it's like when someone hears change and then they can see the change then people aren't as afraid to it which is why I believe it's number one the four it's like the fourth best restaurant in the entire world is because when you hear change it's like okay that's crazy but then when you actually see it then it's not necessarily change but it's like a new like it's like a new thing and that you have to try like you can see the difference yeah. And so um, I believe that just kind of going out there and just expecting the better than the, rather than the worse and staying optimistic. Because of course bad things are going to happen, downfalls are going to happen. But um, I mean, you know, it's like it's not like the end until it gets over. You know what I mean? Very good. Um, I feel like this kind of relates to um, the last essay you wrote about how um, it was like rebellion. How yeah. That's, yeah. yeah, the adversity one and how rebellion, no, not the adversity. It was the one, it said, it was like a quote, and it was about it's rebellion. Like, yeah, like, disobedience, disobedience and like rebellion yeah. like yeah. leads to like social change. Yeah, 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 yeah. progress social change. I feel like this is like that on a smaller scale because, you know, him going against current is kind of him like, you know, rebelling, like changing things. <laughs> and like, like Kelly said, it's like, when one person like accepts a change, then that's when people start like, oh, maybe I should too, you know? Yeah. And so like, I don't know, it's just like, it starts off small, but like you can grow, but you know, unknown also comes with a lot of like, you know, unknown things. So like when exploring the unknown, you have to realize that it's not gonna always turn out good. And you have to be able to be strong enough to take that risk. So like, if it was me, I would make sure that I had like a, a backup plan, you know? Because he did like take a big risk like trying to like change traditional Peruvian foods. But it's kind of like he had like a taste of like how people would react when he was working for um, that other guy that was like the top chef before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. when he was working for him. And like, you know, he was at his restaurant in, or he was at his restaurant and it wasn't in Peru, it was in a different country. And he like changed one of the traditional dishes, but like people liked it, you know, they thought he was creative. So I think that along with him, you know, wanting to explore and like see new things in his past, when he realized that people, you know, might actually like it, that he had a chance, is when he was really like, okay, I need to get out of here. I need to do my own thing now. Mm -hmm. um, when you were asking about personal experiences, I feel like this is something everyone in this classroom can relate to, but just coming here to Isla, mm -hmm. oh, like you said yeah. this before, mm -hmm. but um, that was really like a big risk because mm -hmm. you, the program just started here, no one knew about it, and I mean, I feel like we've come really far. We've done, we've done really well. I'm, I'm proud of everybody in here. Even when I get mad, rah, in the end, I do it with a sense of love. I understand. You know. Thank you. Uh, hey, go for it. Going back to what she was saying about reactions and change, um, when Virgilio would overhear the customers saying, like, oh, this is like New York style, this is like Italian. And he got, not upset, but he really wanted the people to feel how he felt about Peru and how he wants them to say, hey, this is Peruvian, this is what Peru tastes like. So the change that he had to go through when he traveled 
and he went to all these different places, tried these new things, and then brought it all back, and then gave him these things that were uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but they embodied what Peru was really like. That change, to me, was the best part of the documentary, where wow. yeah. right. people actually said, wow, this is Peru, I mm -hmm. really like this. And is, is that what he was trying to accomplish with his... Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, he didn't really give off what he wanted to at first. So he just went and adopted, like, a whole philosophy on an isolated, like, village, right? And their philosophy was, like, they don't see the world horizontally. Instead, they see it vertically. And he adopted that to his menu so that people would just get the gist of, like, this is the different levels of Peru. And that changed kind of, like, he lost customers, yeah, but... He got people to see his message, and that's what he really wanted. He was like, this is my identity, it's Peru, and I want you guys to taste it, and see how I see it. I mean, think about musicians. When they go off the grid, kind of, and like, don't do the music that everybody else does. They yeah. do it a new way. You know, you know about that? Uh, I wanted to develop on that. Musicians who go off the grid, jazz musicians, back yeah. in old, like, Louisiana, they they never had a piece of music in front of them. They were always striving for that unknown. They they soloed. They they made everything off the top of their head like that. They were they weren't afraid either. So I don't believe that the message entirely goes towards them because I don't think that there's much as shock or disappointment within those musicians unknown. More as using that unknown to their advantage and making it to bigger themselves, better themselves because. If you make a wrong note, just add another one. Make it better. Make it sound like it was wrong. Make it sound like it was right. That's what you got to do. And I feel like that's what really anybody's got to do with that unknown. You run into something that you didn't expect. You make it what you expected. You make it better by adding on what you think should be happening. Right. I'll pass it to Bryce because I want him to get in this. Oh, absolutely. Um, all right. So, I mean. If in terms of like we've been talking about the unknown and I mean this guy if I mean I read I admit I didn't read the whole introduction we were supposed to read but you know I read, no, no, you could read I read a chunk of it I read a get fair a gist. bit of it but in terms of what he's done in his life is pretty crazy when you talk about he's worked in four different countries or something like that four plus if you count what the US England, which is London, I guess, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> uh, Colombia and Peru, I mean. And Spain? And Spain, that's yeah. the other one. Five. So five countries. Um, and in a sense, he took all that experience and put it together. And I mean, he's not the only person that's done this. I mean, if you can look at people that have started their own business, entrepreneurs, you got guys, I mean, not the greatest example, but you got Bill Gates and all them. No, some, no, yeah. Some guys who dropped out of high school and then able to create pretty much one of the most influential companies that are around now. It's pretty crazy. So based off of this and what they've said, it's it's pretty much the unknown in the sense is worth it because in the end it's the experiences you have and what you gain from them that make you as a person. And I mean ultimately as we've seen in the documentary, whatever you want to call it, the TV show. And um, based off of the success of people that have strived to get somewhere by taking the path less traveled, I mean, it shows that most of the time, believe it or not, the unknown is the way to go. All right.